Praise God. All glory to the Creator God of heaven and earth. All glory to God in the highest who is the only God that we serve and the only God that can interpret scriptures for us through the Holy Spirit of God. I'm going to begin with a question to you as we go and dwell deeper into the Word of God. I'm going to say to you this, why did Pontius Pilate, why did he wash his hands and then say, it is no longer my affair, I am out of here. Why did Pontius Pilate wash his hands when the Messiah stood before him? And then I'm going to tell you this. I find that God is God of all creation because only God can interpret it. And then we look at it this way. There are two laws that God is saying. There is the law of the flesh. And there is the law of the Spirit of God. The one will cause your death. And the one will set you free. God has set His people free. He has set His Israelite people free. They are no longer under bondage. They are no longer bound. They have been set free. But the Bible says that they will not see that. Until they see it from the scriptures. Until it is revealed for them before the Messiah comes. So that they can build the temple of God in the right time. Now let's go to Mary. And we have a look at Mary quickly. And we'll see under what law did Mary fall. Mary fell under the covenant of God, the, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, the mercy of God. She did not come under the law of the flesh. If she fell under the law of the flesh, they would have taken her and stoned her to death as well as Joseph. But we find that there is another law in taking place. And that is the law of God that overrides and oversees any other law that is written. Now there are consequences. Mary, we are told, or we can read in and we can see her entire family deserted her. Because why? They gave her the law of the flesh. They did not see the law of the spirit. They saw the law of the flesh. And they said all the time that they see her, they saw the law, the breaking of the law. And that's why Mary's family all of a sudden disappeared. Why did Pontius Pilate wash his hands? Because Pontius Pilate saw that the Messiah was innocent. Pontius Pilate saw that they were going to crucify an innocent man, not worthy of death. And he tried to absolve himself by washing his hands and saying, I am out of here. I don't take responsibility. But I find you have to take onuses of the choices you make. I find that the God of all creation expects you to take onuses of that which you do. And that's why he washed his hands. He tried to absolve himself from it. And he couldn't. The choice he made was that he sent the Messiah to the cross which was ultimately the plan of God, because that's what set the entire universe free from sin, from the bondage, from the law that they put themselves under. The law of sin is always the devil's law. It puts you under bondage. It binds you. It ties you up. 
and gets you tied down to the earth. The law of life, the law of the Spirit of God is God's law. And we're going to find that in the Old Covenant, in the Old Covenant, it was always so. It began in grace. God's grace started this whole entire process. And it ends with grace. And then the judgment of God. You cannot have the grace of God without the judgment. But we are not under the judgment of God. In that we have been set free because of the Messiah. The Israelite people right throughout the Old Covenant were set free by the Messiah. They were set free because they were looking towards the Messiah. Their faith was based on the coming of the Messiah. Their freedom was based on the grace of the Messiah that gave up His life and shed His blood. They did what they did in the physical by the sacrifices that they made as a physical attribute to show that they are being forgiven because of the work of the cross of the Messiah. Jericho fell because of the grace and power and the anointing and move of God. On a people of God. It was for no other reason. No man caused those walls to fall. It was the grace of God. It was the work of God. It was the work of the Spirit of God. How do we know this? Well, let's go back into the desert. We find simply this. The first generation could not come out from underneath the law. They were bound by the law because they could not see in the Spirit. And then I find only three men saw beyond that. They saw the Spirit. They saw the awesomeness of God. And then they came back to Moses and said, We can take it. We can do it. Because our God goes before us. And the rest of the people began fearing, trembling. And said, we're coming against the giants. We cannot do it. And they, Moses went straight back to the Lord God and inquired from God, what do I do? And God said to him, go back into the desert. This generation must pass because they don't see the grace, the mercy, the power, the anointing, and the move of God. They do not see God. They need to be taught. They need to be retaught. They need to have that law washed out of them. And the new generation sprang up. And that new generation knew God. They walked not under the law. They walked under the grace and guidance of God. Through the prophet Moses that was leading them. Ezekiel speaks about this. Ezekiel speaks is coming a day that you will no longer have this hard heart of stone. But it will be transformed into a heart of flesh. And you... The Spirit of God will move among each and every one of you. The Spirit of God will move in you, transforming this heart into a heart of flesh. How do I know that? How do I know that? God didn't judge them. He set them free. Man is always judging. God sets free. God sets free. We are reputed the righteousness of God through the Messiah, the Lord and Christ. That is what we do. The Messiah opened up grace and he reminded the people of the grace of God that they experienced in the desert. 
He didn't come and put a whole new set of rules and regulations. He came and He said, A new commandment I give unto you. Love one another. Why did the Messiah say that? Simply this. Before they killed you. That's what they did. Anyone that was an enemy of God was an enemy of Israel. So they killed them. And they moved them out the way. Because they said there's only one God. There is only one God. Anything else doesn't is false. And then we, Jesus the Messiah says, love one another. Why? Because at His death, the grace of God was extended to the Gentiles. It was extended outwards. It was extended to all people. So the Messiah said, love one another. Because those guys, they're your brothers. Don't kill them. They're your brothers. Because a new commandment I've given you because I have fulfilled scripture. I have fulfilled it because my spirit is poured out upon all flesh. No longer made of stone. Your brothers are seeing it. They are rising up. They are coming back. They're starting to get into that desert experience where it is only God that matters. It is not their condition that matters. It is God and God alone. Now is the time, God says. Now is the time. Because it is an awakening. And the Hebrew children are beginning to wake up and starting to realize that that time has come and gone. And the Bible says, scriptures tell us that there is a time for the Gentiles. And then God turns back and there's a time for his Hebrew children to come back. He's not going to leave anyone without taking his children. He's not going to leave you behind without taking his children. He said it. I will choose them again. I will choose them again. Grace is not a new thing. God taught the Israelites to live and move and go in under the grace of God. And then we have the fall of Jericho. And then as they progressed through the promised land, so they began to forget about that which God had taught them. He showed them the miracles, the signs and the wonders. He showed it to them. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, showed them the signs and wonders, saying, remember what happened in the desert. We are told through scriptures throughout when Joshua took the stones and he put it on the other side. It was a reminder to the Israelites to look back, to look back, to look back all the time to see what God has done. But as they progressed, so they forgot what God had done. And then the Messiah came up. And he said, I'm your sign. I'm your sign. Remember this. He's spoken of in scriptures throughout scriptures. The old covenant, as I said before, is layered over, lay over, layer. Each generation for generation. Each generation is for a new revelation. That's why theology cannot interpret this Bible. That's why the brain cannot interpret the Bible. That's only done by the Spirit of God. That is why you have a look at the Bible and you see the sin of I. What happened there? It was the grace of God that He got them to repent first. He said there are two laws in place. There is the law of the Spirit and there is the law of the physical. 
There is a law. There is judgment. There is grace and there is judgment. And the grace was that they repented and made right. And then the entire family was ta taken and killed. And that is f to fulfill scriptures. The law of the flesh had to take place. They had to come under judgment. And the entire family came under judgment because that's what the old covenant taught. Now, we have a look at what Jesus said in the, in the Bible. And we have a look at what he says. And he says, I have fulfilled scriptures. The scriptures say this coming a day, each man will testify for himself. Each man will pay for his own choices. Each man will be judged for his own choices. It is not to bring condemnation upon you. Because the Messiah paid it, you are not under condemnation. The minute you have chosen the Messiah as your Lord and Christ, that is when the law of God takes over. That's when the other law steps in and says you are saved by grace of God. Through the work of the cross. From the beginning of your life to the end of your life. You are going to be judged for that. So now I step before God. And I say Lord. Look back upon my life. Look at my life. It's a mess. And the Lord says, I don't see anything. I don't see it. I see the blood of the Messiah that was shed for you. Why? Because I have come before him each time and said, Lord, I've fallen. I've fallen. Woe is me. I've fallen. Please help me. And the law of God comes back into my life. The grace is poured back in my life. And that which I'm stumbling over, until the time that I get the victory over it, His grace is covering me. His grace is covering me. His forgiveness is covering me. His forgiveness is covering you. It's never ending. It never stops. And it never comes to an end. But God says, my people have gone astray. They've been taught all these things. They need to get back to the desert experience where it was only God and you. No longer is there one man as like unto Moses over a, an entire generation of people instructing them. No longer. The Lord Messiah put an end to that through the spirit law of God. And he said, I pour out my spirit upon all flesh that each man can stand and hear from the living God through the spirit of God. So there is no more excuses. There is no more excuses. There is only the bad choices. There are evil men doing the evil work of the devil. And that's all it is. The man is not evil. It is his works that are evil. It is his choices that are evil. Because he's serving not the living God. He's serving the devil who has been put down, destroyed, finished, has no power, has no authority. And God says, my people will return before I come again. Why do they have to build the temple of the living God on earth? Why? Because where is Jesus going to go? He goes back into the temple that his people have built for him. As they've turned and begin to see the Messiah is coming back. That's where it's all about. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about God's chosen people. That is where everybody fails. They fail to see. It's about 
God's chosen people. If it wasn't for God's chosen people, I wouldn't be able to stand here. I wouldn't be standing here. Now let's go to Ezekiel. Chapter 11, 2 to 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise iniquity and give wicked counsel in, those, in this city that say the time is not near to build the houses. This city is a cauldron and we are the flesh. There we have it. The flesh, the flesh is the problem. I is the problem. Then we go to Ezekiel 11, 10 20 to 21 and we read, He shall fall by the sword. I will judge you in the border of Israel and he shall know that I am Jehovah. This city shall not be your cauldron. Neither shall he be the flesh in the midst thereof. I will judge you in the border of Israel and he shall know that I am Jehovah. For he have not walked in my statutes, neither have he executed my ordinances, but have done after ordinances of the nations that are round about you. And it came to pass when I prophesied that Pilate, the son of Beniah, died. Then fell I down upon my face and cried with a loud voice and said, Ah, Lord Jehovah, wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? And the word Jehovah came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel, all of them that are unto whom inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from Jehovah, unto us is this land given for a possession. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith Jehovah, where I have removed them far off among the nations, whereas I have scattered them upon the countries, yet will I be to them a sanctuary for a little while in the countries where they come. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all detestable things thereof, and all the abomination thereof from things. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh. And they will walk in my statutes and keep mine ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walks after their heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will bring their way upon their own heads, says the Lord Jehovah. God has never changed. The revelation of Ezekiel was for the time of Ezekiel and it is for the time of now. There comes a day the Lord says in Ezekiel by the prophet Ezekiel, you will find him amongst the Gentiles. He's coming out. That's the servant of will come out because God has foretold it. And then I want to read you something straight from the Torah, the Word of God, as written by the hands of God, by people moved by the Spirit of God, under the law of the Spirit of God. And we go to Isaiah 14, verse 32. And what will he answer the messages of any nation? That Zion has been established by the Lord, in that the needy of his people shall find shelter. 
the Moab pronouncement. Ah, in that night Ah was sacked, Moab was ruined. Ah, in the night Kir was sacked, Moab was ruined. He went up to the temple to weep. Dibon, to the outdoor shrines over Nebo and Madiba. Moab was weighing on every head baldness. Every beard was shorn. In these streets they are gripped with sackcloth. On its roofs, in all its squares, everyone is wailing, screaming with tears. Hezbon and Elia cry out. Their voices carries to Jahaz. That scripture has been fulfilled. That scripture has been fulfilled. Every scripture that God has put in the, this precious holy word of God. It says before the Messiah returns. It will be fulfilled. Because why? What is the Messiah coming back to do? To put into place the reign and rule of the living God. Through who? Through His chosen people. Through His chosen people. You cannot do that without the temple of God. You cannot do it without the temple of God. So who's God waiting for? God is always waiting for the man to receive the revelation through the Spirit. And how does He do that? By seeking first the kingdom of God. Day and night, night and day, meditating on the Word, precious Word of God. There is no other way to hear from God. Because God is love, God is Spirit, God is truth. He's perfect in all things. And that's what we're doing, folks. We're turning back to God. When I see Moab changing, changing, moving towards, what is he moving towards? He's moving back to God. He's moving towards the people of God because he knows the Spirit of God is unctioning him, calling him. As the Bible says, he will whistle, he will whistle out and they will come, they will come running. That is what he's doing. That is what they do. The devil will always try to kill you. Always try to destroy you. Always take you out. Always try to stop the move and the power of God. But he will never get it right because it is written. It is written. It is written. God, when you look at the end of the Bible, it says God is God and God is one. There is no in-betweens. There is only your soul. And Jesus said this, No greater feat than a man lay his life down for his people. And then Ezekiel says, Exactly all of that. Ezekiel testifies. Ezekiel says, You will recognize him. Check his work. Check, check him out. Test him, test him, test him. And you will see every sign, everything, just as it is written. Just as it is written. No other way, but it is written. It has to be written in the Word of God to be the Word of God. And so I close with that and I thank you for listening. And I pray that this was a blessing to you.